Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of questions as to what I do to train for the high jump. Um, so I thought I'd make a video clearing everything up, what I do. And just a disclaimer, I'm just a guy who jumps for fun. There's very limited research into the topic of high jump and how to train. A lot of what I know is from looking at other high jumpers, how they improve what they do and how they're different. So looking at Stefan Holm here, he only has a 23 inch vertical, which is basically average, but he's able to jump 240, which is two feet over his head. He's able to do this is through really big springy elastic tendons. His Achilles specifically is four times as strong as the normal person's. So in theory, he gets four times as much spring as the normal person from it. So going off of this, what I train specifically is tendons. That's all I really train. And one thing to note is tendons grow really, really slowly. Where muscles adapt in six to eight days, tendons adapt to six to eight weeks. Which means that training is going to take a long time before you actually get to see that improvement. This is probably one of the reasons why it took Stefan home over a decade to get where he got. And going into how tendons can be trained, you can improve the elasticity of the tendon. That's basically just improving the efficiency of the tendon. And the other way is you grow like the size of the tendon, the overall stiffness of it. Because a bigger tendon is going to be able to hold and release more energy in total. Now to improve the tendon elasticity, there's a few ways you can do it. But... What it really comes down to is anything that's just bouncy and somewhat intense, just the rapid contraction and release of the tendons. Plyometrics specifically are what got me past my 6'10 PR up into the 7 foot range because I was stuck at 6'10 for 3 years. I just got tired of it and then I decided to find a way to improve and this is what I stumbled upon. And just a disclaimer before we get into it, plyometrics are super intense. I, You don't want to overdo them. You want to ease into them really slowly. I've seen people's shins explode from doing these. So you just want to make sure that you're being really careful with plyometrics. If you're hurting at all, don't do them. It's better to just wait a few days or weeks to recover than have your shin explode. But as far as plyos go, probably the most basic one that you should start with is alternate bounding. It's basically just running, but you're trying to stretch as far as you can. Every step, just go left, right, just reaching as far as you can go. Uh, if that's too intense, you can do them up a hill. It takes away a lot of the height that you land, so you don't have to hit the ground as hard. You can also do left, left, right, right. Just mix it up, make sure that you see some diversity in what you do. Now the next plyometric is the four-step jump. I'm pretty sure Stefan Holm is the creator of this exercise, but I might be wrong. Regardless, it is my favorite one. You don't need hurdles to do it. You can just find a grass field. Just make sure you're jumping as high as you can each time. Now the next plyometric is the depth jump and hurdle hop. I found these ones are really good for working on the Achilles tendon specifically. Here's Stefan Holm doing some. Dude's an animal. And here we have one of the old Russian plyometric videos. As far as your plyometric sessions go, they should be about 10 minutes long. And in that 10 minutes, you want to get as much done as you can. And as far as loading of plyometrics go, if you're a beginner, you probably want to start doing them once a week. And now the next training type is to increase the overall size of the tendon. Now, I will say this is a new kind of exercise for me, and I haven't really tested my jumping ability yet, but after doing them for four months, I can definitely say that I am faster. Now, from the papers that I've read, tendons need over 70% of your one rep max to grow at all, and they also need that load to be sustained for at least a few seconds. Now, from the papers I've read, eccentric overloading seems to be the best at increasing tendon stiffness so that's what I do and the reason it's the best is because your muscles are actually stronger at resisting being stretched than they are able to contract so you end up being able to load up 
in some cases quite a bit more than your one rep max would allow and put that load on the tendon so they can grow. Now to perform eccentric overloading what you want to do is load a weight that is a bit more than your max and then you want to lower it as slow as possible. You want to aim for at least four seconds on the lowering. And no, this is super intense, so you want to rest in rest at least 48 hours in between your eccentric overloading sessions, otherwise your tendon will actually decay just from the stress. Now the three main tendons I train are the patellar, the Achilles, and then the hamstrings tendons. Now for the patellar, I've found that the leg press is best. You just lift up with two legs and then go down with one leg as slow as you can, back up with two, and then do the other leg. And for the Achilles, it's the exact same principle, just up on two, down on one, lower as slow as you can. If you don't have like a calf raise machine, then you can use a Smith machine. You just need something that's balanced and can load a lot of weight. Now finally the hamstrings. This clip isn't eccentric overloading, but it's the same principle really. You just go down as slow as you can, and then with this you can push yourself up with your arms. And just a reminder, for eccentric overloading you want to do as much as you can in a 10 minute session. Now I know as much as I love tendons, muscle strength is important too, because if your muscles aren't strong enough, then you won't be able to load your tendons appropriately. Now a clip that portrays this perfectly is Vanyak doing his single leg hops. Now if you think that your legs would collapse doing those, then you're not strong enough. I personally think that training the range of motion that you're going to be jumping in is best. However, if you're unable to load enough weight to do that, it's okay to go a little deeper. Specifically, if you're new to the weight room, you don't want to go and load up like 600 pounds on a barbell because you need to work on making sure you have the right form and if you're not ready for that weight, it will break you. Now for training max strength, I like to take a page out of Jonathan Edwards' training book. You want to do very low reps and very high weight. On top of that, you want to have lots of rest in between your sets. I usually go four to six minutes just to recover fully. Now this is my favorite exercise. It can be kind of hard to do just with balance and you need kind of the right set of tools to do it safely. But if you're able to do step ups, they're very specific to the high jump and by far my favorite. A little more basic is the half squat or core squat, just depending on where you are and how you feel. Nice short range of motion. You want to push up as fast as you can go. And finally the hang clean to train your tendons and muscles at the same time. And here's just some final notes. Um, eccentric overloading does reduce tendon elasticity, so you should probably do it pre-season and then do your plyometrics more in season. Also rest is super important for performance. I've found my best performances were after I'd been sitting around for like two weeks straight doing nothing. Um, don't break yourself and I hope this helps you jump. So see ya.